Hello. <clears throat> what is that? What are you? You don't belong in here. Are you inside or out? Okay, you're out. Okay. I had a stowaway. <laughs> it's like, are you in the car with me? Are you friendly? <laughs> oh no, look comfy. So I had a, <clears throat> I had a fun little, fun little breakthrough. I don't know. I've been working on this uh, I squared C problem at work for a while, off and on, uh, <clears throat> off and on because it's been really annoying because I'm learning uh, PSOC designer and I'm, you know, my, my, I have very, very low, low skill level, I guess, I don't know. I'm not very familiar with most of these uh, integrated circuit suites. Uh, but PSOC seems to be quite professional about all this, and, you know, they're used frequently for commercial stuff. So it's, it's good and it's what we use at the uh, Unicomp, so that's what I'm learning. And uh, it has a built-in I2C interface for the chip, and it is, I think it's an FPGA, so some of it's a little, you know, semi-hardware, but... Uh, uh, I have no idea why allergies or sinuses, but, but whatever. <clears throat> I suppose it could actually be sick. That's possible. It's just... It's just its own integrated system. And it works well for the existing stuff that we're using it for. So it would be ideal for us to use that. Uh, only problem is, it. I could not get it to react the correct way. It didn't seem to react in any uh, uh, predicted way. Uh, get, that said, my I squared C knowledge is somewhat limited, uh, but I've already messed around with it a little bit and sent data back and forth. But this is like a new IDE and a new implementation, and it's their, you know, easy I squared C interface. So it's all, it's all rather custom, and uh, I was trying to interface with it from a Raspberry Pi as master. So, like there, there was a lot of, there was a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that needed to integrate, and I could just, I could never get it, I could never get it talking, I could never get it to communicate. I could see it, I could, uh, it would show up as an address, uh, address, but I could not uh, send data to it in a way that would cause it to act or send data to it in a way that would cause it to uh, change its uh, activity or what it was doing. So I had a, another session of messing around with it on Friday and was you know, achieving <laughs> levels of frustration that shouldn't even be possible and uh, <laughs> I started just redoing things and dropping things out you know you get to that point where you're just like it's like I don't even care like change this take this out I don't know what you're doing remove you add something completely different drop in an example adapt <coughs> you're just kind of doing stuff and then I kind of got a response and I was like well that's kind of weird why would it do that so I started looking into my uh, the library I was using <coughs> the Raspberry Pi library. <coughs> why? Why? Okay, I take it back. It's allergies. Okay. Um, and I realized that there were a few other features and a few other people that were complaining about weird responses. So I'm like, is this just kind of quirky? <laughs> quirky. Quirky is computer talk for the bad code. <laughs> So uh, I eventually got it to work. I got it to the point where I could change data on it and figure out what memory address it was actually changing. Because it was like there's like this offset built into it, and I'm honestly not sure if it's uh, uh, I should say uh, I'm truly not sure if it's a problem with the SMC bus library in Raspberry Pi 
or if it's uh, a problem or if it's a, a, a feature uh, of the Easy I squared C interface. <laughs> but it seems to respond with one extra byte of data. And I'm like, I'm relearning all my bits and bytes and, and nibbles and all that. So it's, it's somewhat frustrating. But I got it to, I got it, I, I, bleh, bleh. I got it to get data out of it. I got to get data out of it. I got it to, I got to be able to write uh, a byte of data in the appropriate field and have the slave device, the PSOC slave device, read it in a matching memory section. Because that was where things got weird is when I started, when I got the data over, the data was transmitting, but it wasn't reading correctly. And I think it was reading correctly, it was just reading into a different memory slot. You know, which I took to mean that there's some type of, uh, like a sync, uh, S-I-N-K, not S-Y-N-C, a sync for one byte of data on the initial communication or something like that. But I'm honestly not sure if I'm grabbing, if that's the problem, if the problem is on the PSOC or if the, the Raspberry Pi thing is like pulling a, a, a pre-byte of data before it reads the actual memory position. So either way, I've got all the data re reacting on it in a correct way. I can write to a specific register on the uh, on the PSOC chip, on the Cypress chip. <clears throat> oh, and there's different versions of PSOC as well, and that all that applies. You know, figure out how you match all that up. <clears throat> and if you're using the wrong one, it, it, it doesn't work, but other people are having similar issues, and they're like, oh, here's my code for this. Oh, thanks, it works now. And they never say if it's what version of PSOC it is. <laughs> so you're like, is, is this my flavor of this fix or no? <laughs> but it was just, it was one of those things that I realized it was very uh, uh, archetypal, uh, you know, you're always going to have challenges in, in whatever task you do and there's always going to be a time and this is something that I realized a long time ago uh, and it's probably served me one of the one of the most powerful lessons to learn I think uh, <clears throat> is there's always going to be a problem and you're always going to hit a wall there's always going to be a wall always 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 um, it's very few you know there have been a few times where I just you know, plug some stuff together and hit play, you know, uh, compile the code or run the script and it just works. And I'm like, okay, am I done? I guess I'm done. <laughs> but I should say 99% of the 99.9, .9, whatever. Y you're always going to run into a problem. And that's, that's going to be, this is not about programming. This is about life, you know, and I'm sure you came here for life advice, but <laughs> there's always going to be an instance where you just hit the wall. And once you hit the wall, the question is, what are you going to do about it? Um, the thing that irritates me, I guess, irritates and motivates me, is that uh, while I'm working on this, in the back of my mind, I know for a fact that it is possible. And because it is possible, if I am not able to do it, the problem is me. I am the issue. And no matter what, whether it takes, uh, you know, me hitting my head against the wall for a year, or if it takes me calling up Cypress and getting him on the phone and being like, okay, well now I'm doing this and now I'm doing that and does it and will it and should I for hours a day for a week to get it to work, it will work. Um, but what was particularly interesting about this uh, specific episode was that I didn't know what was wrong and I didn't know how to fix it so what I did was just try stuff and uh, trying stuff uh, try stuff TM you know <laughs> trying stuff I, it doesn't work what should I do try stuff <clears throat> I was I was almost fuzzing just like sending data at it uh, to see what it did, because once I could get a reaction out, a response out of it, 
like I could see what data was coming back. I'm like, all right, well, this is a, a bunch of gobbledygook, but what happens when I do this? And then look, is it the same gobbledygook? <laughs> and then eventually you start being able to recognize like, well, when I send it this, I get back that. So what am I doing here really? And then you start tweaking what you send it and you reset it a few times and you try again and you try to reproduce it. <laughs> you, uh, you boil down what you sent to it to its bare minimum and realize that, oh, this is really the command. And oh, this is the, med the memory register that I'm, uh, I'm sending to it or that I'm getting back from it. Because I'm still getting back some gobbledygook but I can at least reliably identify where the items that I want are and how to pull them straight out of that data. Because this is going into uh, a Python interface. So, you know, uh, I'll write structs or whatever I want to read the different windows of data or reassign them so that it's a lot easier to just reference it uh, more abstractly instead of being like, well, your, 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 your register zero is technically your register 21 uh, because this data over here that you don't really care about is also gonna come back. But instead of having to keep all that garbage in your mind, you can just, you know, write a little method that just says, get the register <laughs> and let the computer do the work for you of, uh, of thinking of all the adjustments that need to be made. <clears throat> but it was just, it was an interesting exercise, and it was very, very uh, cathartic. Like, I didn't, the, the CEO was like down the hall, and I, it was late in the day, and everyone was gone. Uh, I knew my boss was still here, but he's like in the, across the hall on the other side. And when I got it, I was... <laughs> When I made the data change and I figured out what it was, I was like, yes, 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 yes. And uh, and then I heard some shuffling. I'm like, what's that? And then he just walked past my door. And I'm like, why, you idiot. Uh, it was very, I was, he didn't mind. It was whatever, but it was just embarrassing. Uh, I was very excited. Uh, I was very happy to have gotten it to work. And... Like the harder the struggle, the better the better the payoff. The more cathartic uh, the the success is. But it was it was awesome, and uh, I guess that's in comparison to those those few times where you uh, where you like you start up a project and you're like, all right, so I'll need this library and this library, and I'm gonna call it like this. <clears throat> Good, and then send that to some JSON data. Okay, and now there's all things that I wanted and I'm done I'm like okay like, well I was kind of prepared for a fight but uh, I guess it's done already like that's good it's efficient <laughs> it's not very satisfying you don't feel uh, successful you don't feel like you climbed a mountain <laughs> and maybe that's worth more I guess I don't know uh, this was, I mean, this is like a months long problem that I've been working on off and on, uh, with what appears to be zero success, but I know enough now to know, I know enough now to know, uh, I know enough about myself to know that if I introduce, if I'm having a hard problem, I need to introduce myself to it, to, you know, wade into it, work on it and then break contact with it for like a week. And then I can come back to it and do a little bit more and probably get even more frustrated and then break contact. And then come back after a week or two weeks. And then slowly my brain in the background seems to just figure some of this stuff out or you know, put these things in logical boxes so that it makes sense to me later. And then, I don't know, it's like I, I get into this mode where I'm like, I'm just going to do stuff now. I'm just going to try stuff. And I somehow always seem to try the right stuff. And then it works. <clears throat> and my brother was talking about this. Uh, he's like, you, you get to your 30s and then you're like, oh, now I'm figuring out how my body works. Like, and it, it, his statement was like, your life's like half over already. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, we, 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 live, we live pretty long these days, but it, it is really frustrating to get in your 30s and be like, oh, 
well, that's not the right way. That that's not something my body likes. Uh, my body does really bad when we do does really poorly when we do this. I don't know. I think it's perhaps uh, the sensitivity goes up because when you're 20, it just kind of doesn't matter. Even if your body doesn't like it, it's like, eh, you know, I'm good. I can, I can, I can deal with this. But when you get to your 30s, you're like, oh, my body does not like that. It is very clear and very obvious to anyone that that is not okay. My body disapproves of this, uh, this course of action. <laughs> and when you're in your 20s, your body's just like, ah, I'll deal with it. No worries. So maybe it's like that, that information is not even available to you at that early point in your life. <laughs> Unless you're very, very attentive, perhaps. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's cool and it's fun to be fighting with a problem, any kind of problem. You know, it doesn't matter if you're uh, programming a chip and trying to get it to communicate, or if you're, you know, trimming a tree that has a, a very odd limb configuration that's pretty dangerous to cut, that you have to just figure out the right way to do it and then have it cut, or, you know, felling a tree. Felling a tree takes a lot of skill and planning, um, and that's extremely cathartic. <laughs> so there's always something, and we're always just looking for that, uh, uh, I don't want to say glory, but the success, the, the, the proof of skill. Um, not quite sure what it is. The, the I, mean, I mean, it's the catharsis. We're chasing the catharsis, but... It's also satisfaction in the knowledge that you did something correctly uh, or perfectly or near perfectly, I guess. Uh, just achievement, accomplishment. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay.